A remarkable transformation is taking place in Ethiopia's highlands. The rolling hills are gradually turning from degraded watersheds back to healthy, productive lands once again. And people's lives have been transformed too. The benefits we have got are for our community, our cattle, our soil and our environment. Many still think of Ethiopia as a land of famine. But times have changed. This is a country healing her landscapes. A nation whose people are leading themselves to prosperity and onto economic development. Over the last decade, the ambitious sustainable land management program has been a key driver of change. The strategy of using sustainable land management to eradicate poverty has been very effective. Planning starts from communities who share a common interest in their own micro-watersheds. Experts support them with options and know-how. So the planning is both ways. Framework planning is developed by the region, by the top government, but as well, the final plan endorsement is coming from the bottom. At the end of the day, it's the communities who decide and implement the solutions of their choice. Girma Tezazu explains a new livestock management system that improves the pastures in Hamhara, just as in other regions. The grass you see growing is the result of our work. We now cut and carry the bundles to our animals. But what are the keys to this extraordinary turnaround? First, enduring commitment at the highest level, addressing degradation and managing land sustainably is allocated top priority. The program spans all administrative levels, from the very top down to the lowest administrative level, the village or kabele. If we have one kabele that has good experience to share, we take the feedback, compile it, send it to all other districts and kabeles. The information reaches about 3,000 kapeles in Bahir Dar within just two or three days. In addition, the government and development partners are united in their support for the program and its approach. Second, it's demand-driven, embracing everyone, men and women, the young and the old. Communities plan their own micro-watersheds. Simultaneously, the government launched a program of land certification, which gives farmers increased security and an incentive to invest in conservation. Third, planning, based on watersheds, moving to a landscape approach. In this example, the landscape can be divided into four sections. Irrigated land on the valley bottom, rain-fed croplands, grazing areas higher up, and the eroded upper slopes. Initially, efforts focused on rain-fed croplands by building terraces and other soil and water conservation measures. Gradually, the rehabilitation works were extended to degraded, overgrazed communal areas people realized that land could not be restored without managing livestock. So areas were enclosed, mostly by community agreement. In recent years, efforts have expanded onto the upper slopes by treating gullies and planting trees. Now rainfall is captured over large areas, and the level of water in wells is rising. Seasonal rivers have begun to flow all year, too. 
opening opportunities for irrigation and diversification of crops. In less than 10 years, 10 million hectares have been improved through enclosure. 15 million hectares have been treated with conservation measures and at least 30 million people have benefited from the program. The environment has profited too. Biodiversity is back. Once more, it's a living landscape. The state minister sees the approach as integral to a new national strategy. This climate resilient green economy strategy helps the country and also there is a sign that it is helping to ensure greening the country. This will help ensure food security of the country and the poverty reduction. Ethiopia has a clear roadmap for the future and there's a buzz of excitement and a feeling of pride on this journey into a greener and better fed future.